We appreciate you joining us today for another episode of Ministry Matters That Matter. I am in Henderson, Tennessee. It is during the Freed Hardman Lectures, and I'm here with my good friend, Justin Rogers. Justin and I have known each other for several years. We worked together for about eight years as professors here uh, at Freed Hardman. We've also had the privilege of doing a future leaders class for many years at Polishing the Pulpit. And so I've been able to see him in everything from the highest academic environment you can imagine, wrestling with the Hebrew language, to dealing with 12-year-olds, teaching them how to put a Wednesday night devotional together. And I have tremendous respect for him. He is just a natural-born leader. He leads the graduate program right now here at Freed Hardeman, will eventually become the Dean of Bible. So let me just start out, you know, tell us about yourself, tell us about uh, your beautiful family and what you do both congregationally and here. Well, as you know, originally I'm from Kentucky. Amen. <laughs> lifelong Wildcats fan. And uh, we moved here, I guess, in 2010, whenever I finished um, my coursework for my graduate school degree in Cincinnati. And we've lived here ever since in Henderson. And I preached for the Christian Chapel Congregation in Wildersville for a while. And then since 2018, I've been at the Broad Street Congregation in Lexington, Tennessee, about 30 minutes away from Freed Heart. It's okay. Now, are you still teaching much here? I know you're moving more and more to administration, but are you still teaching a lot? I do. I, I teach right now. I'm teaching three classes, which okay. is kind of a heavy load with the administrative stuff. But yeah, I still do that and uh, still teaching classes in the graduate school of theology primarily, but occasionally undergraduate classes too. Yeah. Very good. One of the things I wanted you to do today is to talk about the book that you did for the Lads to Leaders program. And that's something that both of us believe in. And so you wrote a book on leadership. So I'm thinking, first of all, as you're in dialogue with them, in other words, when you plan a book, you, you've got a plan for yeah, it, right. something you envision happening. So kind of talk to us about what you as a group envision or you personally envision, and then some specific things that you talked about. Okay. So the book is called Courage to Lead. And what we found with Lads to Leaders is that it does a great job with the lads, getting them to the point of being able to lead and worship and things of that nature. But with a congregation, oftentimes you do have problems with leadership. You have people who are qualified to lead who really don't want to, or you have people who need to learn how to lead better. And so the book was sort of written to be a dialogue creator in a congregation so that maybe a group of men can sit in a, in a congregation and talk about the contents of this book and how existing leadership can be get better, how people can be motivated to lead in ways that they maybe wouldn't have thought about otherwise. So it's really a conversation creator. Now, some of the things that we talked about is most of us are already leaders and don't know it. In fact, if, if anyone looks at you and said, man, I would love for that guy to be a deacon or I would love for that man to be an elder, there's a good chance you're probably already demonstrating those leadership qualities or people wouldn't say that about you. So it's, it's recognizing that you're already leading even though you're not in charge. And then the second thing we, we want to talk about is leading is not really about being in charge. I, I love the statement that Simon Sinek makes about leadership. He says, you know, leadership is not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in your charge. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's something to church leadership, especially it's about people and helping people become more like Christ. And if you are a committed Christian, you are qualified to do that with other people. So yeah, that's kind of what the book is about. 13 chapters. It can be studied in a quarter and a lot of churches from what I hear are using it for that purpose. That's outstanding. Yeah. Our leadership team at Heritage, we go through three to four books together a year. And in not this past year, the year before, uh, Cynic's book, Leaders Eat Last, was yeah, one of the books. That's a good book, through. yeah. That's a great book. And that's one of the things he's really stressing in that book is your responsibility to those who have been entrusted to your charge. Okay, so let's think about the work you do here at Broad Street. You know, your background and training, of course, you've, you've, you've done ministry for years. Your academic training is, is focusing on theology and language, etc. But you also live in the world of ministry and ministry leadership and now administration and academic leadership. Yeah. What are some lessons you've learned from your administrative work here at Freed Hardman and in your local work? You know, what are some le leadership lessons you've learned or maybe some principles that guide you? Yeah, well, that's a great question. And honestly, I failed in pretty dramatic fashion in all those areas at different times, just 
because sometimes you forget that leadership is not about accomplishing goals and objectives. It's really about people mm -hmm. and helping people become closer together, helping, helping people move forward. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy either to get behind people and push to a point where they're uncomfortable or uh, to get out and run so fast in front of them that they're not catching up. And uh, that's a mistake a lot of leaders, I think, mm -hmm. make because we're high energy, go, go, go people. And not everybody's like that. And so that's been a mistake that I've made, to be sure. But I've learned from that. I've learned that, um, it, it, well, Heifetz and, and Linsky in their book, Leadership on the Line, say that you have to challenge people at a rate they can absorb. Yes, gotcha. <laughs> and, you know, some people can absorb more than others. And so to really sort of pare back, it's not so much expectations. It's just how far people mm -hmm. can go in a short amount of time and to work with them to get the very best out of everybody including yourself. That, that's something I've not perfected, but I've learned to do better. Yeah. It's interesting that coach quote you referred to. I believe that is referred to uh, in the book, Canoeing the Mountains. Oh, I've read, read that, that book too. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's, that, that's a good book as well. It is. Yeah. So let, let me mention that while, while we're on that, are there some leadership resources? You know, you, you've mentioned a book or two. What are some resources you have found helpful in the area of leadership? Okay. Well, uh, starting with uh, things within our congreg congregations, Churches of Christ. I mean, you have this book on leadership that I'm sure your viewership has heard a thing or two yeah, about. Probably it's on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my, you know, uh, my book, I think, is very good for a, a Bible study in a congregation. Um, it's, it's not like yours. You take it up and read it personally like that. But, um, there are others, uh, uh, uh Bob Turner has written a couple of books on leadership that are very good as well. But when you think outside of that, I'm a big fan of the work of Patrick Lencioni, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like team building and the mm -hmm. dynamics of working with groups of people. Uh, his, he's first rate. Uh, I mentioned Heifetz and uh, Linsky, Leadership on the Line is an excellent book. I still like the book by um, Dr. Anderson, They Smell Like Sheep for mm -hmm. Church Leadership. That is still excellent, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, the first one, uh, he had a second volume that came out, but the first one is just really, really great. So all of those would be worth worth your time, I, I think. Yeah, we are, our leadership team, we are finishing the fourth of a cycle of books we've been going through as a team. And we're actually reading Bob's book, oh, okay. Essential, right now, yep. where he talks about the four essentials to yep. life and leadership. So here in about a month, we will, what we do is we'll read it and then in one of our administrative council meetings, we'll have a designated day to discuss it. Okay. And we'll yeah. pick a different person to lead that discussion. And we find that very helpful for us. So like this year, we've done that book. We've done The Speed of Trust. Okay. And which is a really good book. And then we've done Canoeing the Mountains. And then we did the little, it's a kid's book, I guess you would say. It's a parabolic book written by a French author, The Little Prince, oh. that was recommended by one of our guys. And so it was interesting kind of looking at, you know, some of the hidden things there. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, one of those books it's written for children but it's also written for the adults who are reading yeah, yeah. Each other. and <laughs> yeah. so yeah. I, we have found that very helpful as a team to pick out some books so sometimes if nobody has something they're really excited about then i'll say hey let's let's start looking at mm -hmm. uh, these things but it's it's really fascinating you know there are five of us in that group I mean, four vice presidents to just say, okay, tell me what you're reading or you're hearing about that we ought to be mm -hmm. reading as a group. And that is very helpful. And I, I think if churches mm -hmm. and um, institutions, especially that are focused on the work of God, if you would just say, hey, let's, let's read these books together. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's just an email dialogue about it or yeah. some online discussion you can't get in the same room, or if you have to do it by Zoom if you're spread out in different areas, there's just something about all of you thinking about something related to what you do in leadership together and then having conversations about it, that is yeah. that is very, very helpful. Yeah, we do the same thing here, and I, I think it is helpful. I think not only reading things, but sometimes your takeaway is really different from somebody else's mm -hmm. takeaway, and you learn from mm -hmm. various people's perspectives, even though you're reading mm -hmm. the same source. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that, that's a really, really insightful thing there because— it is fascinating. I, I remember some time ago at a conference listening to a speaker talk about the parable of the prodigal son or the faithful father, the other brother, whichever yeah. title you want to use. And he had done and had seen some research 
where they looked at that parable in different cultures oh, and what yeah. the different cultures saw depended on their experiences. Yes. So cultures where they had been through famine, mm -hmm. they noticed that he had been through a famine. Does that make sense? Yeah, we wouldn't even, yeah. Yeah, in the U.S. culture, they noticed that he wasted what he had. In cultures where they had lived in foreign lands, they noticed he had to go through living. So that there is value then. You think about it, if you could then yeah. have all of those in the same room, right? there's something you will notice about that book that I wouldn't. And that's why I really do like, one of the reasons I like reading a book in dialogue with other people. Yeah, yeah. Especially books on leadership, too, because that yeah. makes the whole team better. Yes. And you hit on something that I have seen as a common theme in books on leadership, and that is that, that leadership is about relationships. Right. And that's one of the reasons we read The Speed of Trust. You know, this is Covey, the the son of the, the dad yeah, who Steven. did those seven habits. But, you know, one of the things he says, if if you don't have trust, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And whether that tr lack of trust is real or imagined, it doesn't change the outcome. Yeah. And that one of the keys to building trust or restoring trust is relationships. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Are, are there any other things? I know you've got a lot of things going today, but related to leadership or ministry or preaching that, you know, we've got folks here that are doing ministry and leadership every day. Is there anything else you can think of from your life or the impact on the family that you would love to share and why you've got their attention? Well, I would say that one of the best things that we can do to build team and create relationship is just don't negate or diminish the small talk. They, oftentimes you will learn the most about people in the most informal of situations. Mm -hmm. And so you're leaning in somebody's office door and they'll tell you way more than they will tell around a table mm -hmm. with a group of other people. And I, I think that with a ministry staff, especially that's very important at larger congregations, but even at congregations that are not so large, having those kinds of car rides to the hospital with an elder, those are really important mm -hmm. in building that relationship and trust. And it, I think it's easy for us to distill meeting times to formal meeting times mm -hmm. when really those informal moments are when that relationship is built best. You know, it's interesting you mention that. We found we have monthly on the first Tuesday of the month during lunch, we have a faculty staff meeting. What we have found is the best part of that is the eating together and talking. Yeah. And there will be times we really don't, we may not, we may share a couple announcements they need to know. There are some weeks you've got to cover something, something's happened and you've got to deal with it, you know, or just inform people about it. But the most valuable part of that is just the small talk. Yeah. And so there's been times where like, I really hate to start a meeting because the magic is happening <laughs> right now while everybody's eating and sharing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I wish you'd give your love to your family. I will. Uh, Appreciate what you're doing for the kingdom. I want you to know I'm praying for you as you take on new responsibilities in the work Thank here. You. The kingdom needs leaders. It needs faithful preachers of God's word. And I'm grateful for what the school and what you and your family are doing to make that happen. Thank you, Kirk. I appreciate it. Know that we're praying for you. I pray for you regularly. And wherever you are and what you're doing, I just need you to be reminded that what you do for God matters. So hang in there, keep growing, keep learning. We'll keep growing and learning together. If you've got suggestions for what we can do, there are several avenues through the comments. You can email me at kbrothers at hcu.edu. We would love to hear from you about things that you would love for us to talk about in these times together. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Ministry Matters That Matter.